Talk you through um, the main features of the new um, Windows Phone Mango release. So the first thing I'll do is actually unlock the device. And you'll see it takes me instantly to the home page. So if you we have these live tiles that are constantly changing, constantly showing you the most up-to-date information. Now, there's three main things we wanted to talk about with, with Mango. There's three common themes. The first one is about connect and share. So connect and share really um, enables you to connect and share with the people and the things that are most important to you. So one of the first um, features that we have is within the People Hub. So again, from Windows Phone 7, you may have been familiar with the People Hub concept. You can see all of your contacts. You can actually see what's new at any one point. Um, you can see people you've recently interacted with. Um, and then back to all. Now, um, new in Windows Phone 7 is the ability to actually create groups. So here you can see I've created a demo group, um, a family group. I've got a, um, a group for the lads for going down the pub. Um, and it allows me to categorize people in my life in the way that I do in, in, in my personal life. So what that actually then means I can do is actually interact with those people with a single text message, a single instant message, a single Facebook chat thread. So once I instigate a conversation from here, I can then decide, or they can decide, how we actually carry that conversation on. So it may be, when I start it, the right thing to do is to do that on text because people are away from their PCs. But if they then come into an area where they can use instant messaging, we can automatically switch and pick up that conversation thread on instant messaging. And the device is somewhat smart that it recognizes people's presence. Okay, so we have this ability to not only create groups, but also message to those groups. The other thing that it does, if I take the people that are most important to me, let's go into um, Derek. It shows me an overall profile and all the different ways that I can connect with that person, whether it be writing on their Facebook wall, emailing them, IMing them, phoning them, or um, even their home address. All the information collated in one thread. I can then scroll over here and see what's new with Derek and it shows everything that's um, aggregated from a number of different sources, whether that be email, IM, Facebook, and now LinkedIn, um, and now Twitter, and a bunch of other feeds that are coming in here. And I can see all the information to keep me up to date with Derek and what's new in Derek's life. If I scroll over here, I can actually see the pictures from Derek. So I can see his album. If I open his album, you can see he's got a bunch of different albums here, some on his phone, some he's shared via Facebook, some he's shared via Windows Live. And I, I can actually pull, pull down those pictures real time and um, a, a, actually comment on them, um, comment, uh, publish comments back to Facebook, etc. Okay. So the other great thing about connect and share is managing your um, communications with people. So for example here I have my Outlook messages, this is connected to my exchange server, great for business, it's showing me I've got one new email. If I scroll down here you can see my personal email and it's giving me the option to link a number of personal inboxes that I have. In my case I've linked BT with my Hotmail account to create a single inbox. But we're not prescripting how that should be managed, it's up to the user on how they want to manage that. I've simply decided that I want I want to link BT and Hotmail and that I want to pin it to my homepage. If that becomes less important to me at any one time, I can unpin it from my homepage. But for now, I think I'll keep that on there. Okay, so it's the ability to manage multiple threads, multiple groups of people, and also decide how you actually communicate and present that on the homepage. The other thing that we wanted to talk about today is how we're making apps smarter. And again, using the um, live tiles, um, we can actually use uh, the live tiles to actually display information about live uh, threads. So one of the uh, partnerships we've announced today is with British Airways, and this is an app that they're creating for the Windows Phone 7 platform. Now, the Windows Phone 7 platform gives this app a number of advantages that aren't available on other platforms. So, I can look at the traditional um, panorama view from a Windows Phone 7 app, so I can see flight information, I can see um, the next flight that I've got to make, I can see um, my personal details, I can see more information. And one of the unique features of this app is actually it allows me to view terminal maps. So whichever um, airport I'm flying from, I can actually view a map of the terminal, and that's unique to the Windows Phone 7 app. If I go back to the app itself, I may actually want to check into a flight. So what I'm going to do here 
you see where my next flight is. I'm going to Paris at 2.25. Looks like I've actually missed that one. Um, but I'll, I'll decide to actually check in for the purpose of this demo. And here what I can actually do is select my seat. Really important to you when you're traveling to be able to select the right seat and be able to do that on the go. So quite often you're quite late, you're dashing to the airport, you want to try and um, uh, check in. So let's um, see what we can do here. So I can actually see a real-time view of the interior of the airplane and actually decide which seat I want to book. So I can look through the airplane. I can see that these, these in yellow are seats in business class. Being a cheapskate, I'll probably go for the seat here in economy and just uh, select that and I'll save that seat and that's actually confirmed seat 9F I can then actually decide to check in and you see that it's actually checked me in it's printed my boarding pass to the screen so there's no actual need to print a paper um, boarding pass um, I find this really useful when travelling there's nothing more frustrating than being on your laptop checking in but then not being able to print it and having to get someone in a hotel to do that no longer any need um, from this screen you can actually um, get this uh, use this as a full uh, boarding pass at the gate and use this to check in and the other great thing is I can actually pin it to my home page so rather than just have to go into the app being Windows Phone 7 that's now actually pinned to my home page and there's my flight details instantly wherever I am rather than searching through apps instantly I can see my boarding pass when I get to the airport now we're doing a number of things like this with, with apps. The other great thing that we're doing is blurring the boundaries between the apps and the web. And I'll start to talk around how, how the web experience becomes more than just the browser with our great new search capabilities. So for example, if I want to do a search for a musical artist, let's say Adele, and it will bring up an instant recommendation for Adele. Not only will it tell me information about Adele, it will also offer me the opportunity to download a music application, in this case from Last FM, that will actually allow me to listen to Adele as well. So here I can see for Adele a web search, a local search if there was anything relevant, some images of Adele, and then back to the, 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 the um, full Blue Links web search and an app built in. Some of the other great things on search um, is we're taking search away from being just a browsing experience. So if I go in here, I can look at the... So I've got a text message at the same time, which was useful. So I've gone into what we call local scout. So it's recognised that I'm in London and it's loading instantly information about the, the location I'm in at the moment. And it's making recommendations to me on places to eat and drink, which is a common feature that people look for, things to see and do, shops to shop at, and then some favourites that I may have pinned here. There's also some highlights that it's recommending to me um, based on all of those things from the, from the last few screens. Now, what you'll actually see here is a thing called Quick Cards. So not only does it make some recommendations on places to eat and drink, if I click through here, it's actually showing me what we call Quick Cards, which is a summary of the information about that venue. So rather than just showing, for example, a list of blue links or their website, it's actually showing me the information that I might find important. The address, where I can get directions using Bing, um, the phone number and the opening hours and their website should I need it. Now it can also show me a rating so I can see other people's comments, feedbacks and the whole buzz around that particular venue which is, which is really great for me if I'm um, new to the area. So wherever you land it's going to recognise, you know, if I, if I go to Paris this evening it's going to give me the same information based on my location in Paris. There's some other great new search features built in here. So for example, I may want to do a visual search. Now, visual search is available on other platforms, but here we've integrated it into the search engine. So I'm going to click on visual search. I'm going to hold up a book cover. And what Bing is actually going to do is recognize that book cover. There you go. <laughs> And it's come back with a research and it recognised that's the essentials for Disneyland. It then lets me do a search without having to type anything into the keyboard. And it brings back a web search, again a local search, images, etc. all around that book title. Now the same is true um, if I wanted to search a barcode. I could search a barcode, not just on books, on CDs, but also on a tin of beans, um, or in fact anything that actually carries a bar tag. So again, you see it's instantly recognised that bar tag, and I can go away and do a visual search based on that. 
We also build in the capability to do an audio search, um, either by voice or by music. So if I want to search for background music, here it's searching for background music. There's no music playing at the moment, but should there have been, it would have come back with a recommendation on what that music is and then where I can download that to purchase. So you can see that what we're doing is actually making the search experience much more easier. And then I can go back to the home page and you can see that we, we essentially bring out three key new features. The first one being around uh, connecting and sharing more quickly. And the second being around making apps smarter and easier to use and faster to achieve results from. And then search, um, blurring the boundaries between the browser um, and other um, search capabilities. And that's Mango.